Okay, in this video, I'm going to provide a short demonstration of path analysis with latent variables using the SEM function in Levon and also uh, the SEM paths function in SEM plot. So the raw data is actually contained in a CSV file that you can download from this site right here. Um, I already have it in my downloads folder on my computer. So what I'm going to do is just read the data into R from uh, my downloads folder and create a data object that's called path data L with a capital L at the very end. So we'll start there and then proceed through our analysis. So the first thing I've already kind of been working with the data, but just to uh, just to kind of reiterate um, if, um, that, you know, the first thing that you're going to do when you are uh, working in R is to make sure that your that R is pointed at the file or the folder that's containing your raw data. So just to make sure, I'm going to go to File, Change Directory, and click on Downloads because that's where the CSV file containing the data is located. So I'm going to click on OK. And so at this point, I need to create a data frame uh, called Path Data with a capital L. That's just an arbitrary naming. I'm using the read table function to read in the file name. So the file is path analysis latent note with no spaces dot CSV and then uh, the remaining is the header and uh, indicating that we're working with a comma separated file. So I'm actually going to copy this and paste it into uh, the program and um, there you go. So now the data is ready to go. So if I type in uh, just the name of the data frame, which is path data L, you can see what it looks like. There's actually, it looks like uh, maybe a missing case or two in there, or missing data in there. But basically, you can see that we have all these variables, PREG1, PREG2, PREG3. This was actually a study, you know, from looking at uh, uh, in a group contact and anxiety and relationships to prejudice, those types of things. So um, at any rate, uh, then after you are, are, once you've got the data in to a data frame, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the library function um, to call up the Levine package and then also use the library function to call up SEM plot. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. Even though they're actually already active, I'll just go ahead and type in library Levine and then library uh, SEM and then plot right here. And so now, you know, they're basically ready to go. They were already to go because I was already analyzing the data using these or using. Um, so um, at any rate, let's uh, specify our model. So you can see that I'm creating a data object that's called path model LV. Um, and basically, uh, you'll see that we have our error right here, uh, which is a lesson and a hyphen, followed by you can um, an apostrophe. And anything following that apostrophe and following between really this apostrophe and this apostrophe here, that is the specification of our model. Um, so we're going to need to, so we're basically creating a data object that contains the model specifications. You'll notice that I have a pound sign right here and then anything following that pound sign on that line is going to be treated as a comment. So there's no analyses uh, that's going to be involved with those lines. So you can see I've got pound sign path analysis, and then I've actually created another pound sign on the next line, and I'm deeming this as the measurement model. So the measurement model, you can see I've got my uh, latent factor, which I'm calling uh, inter angst, which um, is basically intergroup anxiety. And you'll notice that uh, we have an equal sign followed by a tilde. So the latent variable intergroup anxiety is being indicated by these observed variables in the data set. So, um, so we have uh, int angst one, int angst two r. That was actually a reverse coded item, and then int angst three um, in uh, right there. Then on the next line, we've got the latent factor prej, which is basically prejudice, um, is being manifested or indicated by. Uh, PREG1 plus PREG2 plus PREG3. So just notice that we have the plus signs that's, um, that's separating the um, indicator variables. Then we have contact. And so then we have um, equals and then a, a tilde sign again. So contact, the latent factor contact is being indicated by three contact variables right here. So that is the CFA portion or the measurement model portion 
And next, I've created another comment line just saying regressions. And here we've got contact um, being a function of intergroup anxiety and prejudice. So the, the basic model uh, right here is just that, uh, it, you know, basically indicating that people who have um, experienced more contact, um, uh, um, that's a function of their level of intergroup anxiety and, and prejudice. Um, it, um, irrespective of whether this makes sense or not in the model, uh, the whole point is just to demonstrate how you can uh, uh, specify the structural portion of the model uh, relating the latent variable. So we've got contact, and then we have a tilde sign right here. So there's tilde, and then we have inner angst plus predge right here. Then that's followed by our, um, our uh, apostrophe. So on the next line, we have fit one, and then you can see we're using the SEM function right here. And within, inside the parenthesis, we've got path model LV, which is basically referring to our object containing our model specification. Then we have data equals, and then path data L, which is our data frame that's containing our raw data. So then on the next line, uh, you know, basically these lines right here just get ways of getting different pieces of information. So uh, let's start off. I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this and uh, I'm going to paste it in R and then we'll, we'll just uh, run basic analysis. So on this fit line, I'm going to hit enter right here. And so now uh, the analysis has been run and uh, the information from the model uh, fitting is contained in the fit one. Uh, object. So if I type in summary and then inside parenthesis fit one and then enter, now I have my uh, model information. So you can see right here we have uh, the chi squared business of fit test. Uh, there's our, this is our chi squared value, our um, degrees of freedom, p value for the model. You can see that um, there's nothing else in terms of CFI or RMSEA or anything like that. And I'll show you how to get that shortly. Um, you can see down here under latent variables, you can see that um, our first paths were based, our first indicator variables for each latent construct was those, um, those um, loadings were fixed at one. So there are no tests associated with those, but we have the significance tests associated with the remaining loadings. Then we have regressions, and you can see that we have our unstandardized regression coefficients for intergroup anxiety and prejudice and uh, significance tests here. You can also see uh, that we have a covariance between the intergroup anxiety and prejudice variable. These are exogenous uh, latent variables, so it's adding in the covariance right there and, and so forth. So that's a lot of the basic model information. Um, if I want more of the fit uh, indices, I can, I can uh, with the uh, summary function, I can type in uh, fit.measures equals true. So if I do that, Then, you know, by scrolling up here, you can see that now we get our RMSEA uh, value right there. There's our SRMR uh, up here. You can see there's our uh, CFI, TLA, and so forth. So we can get all that information by uh, just uh, including fit by measures equals true uh, uh, associated with the summary function. Uh, if I want standardized estimates from the model, um, I can easily obtain those as well. Uh, just type in parameter estimates, include the capital E there, then the name of our, um, our object containing our results, which is fixed fit one right there, comma, then standardized equals true. So if I, uh, I'll just highlight this and uh, paste it in as well, just to show you. And so now you can see we have, you know, basically our original estimates. These are all the unstandardized estimates and uh, Z values and P values and so forth. Um, but the, the, um, Standardized coefficients are going to be found under the STD.all, and so these are um, the coefficients that we would probably most likely want to uh, report on when we're reporting on the standardized solution. So um, next, let's say we want to look at uh, the uh, the path diagram. Then, uh, because we've already called up SEM plot, now we can use the SEM paths function associated with it. So you'll notice that I've got SEM paths, capital P there, uh, followed by the uh, fit one uh, uh, data object. Then I've got what equals, and then inside quotation marks, paths, comma, what labels with a capital L, 
equals, and then inside parenthesis, uh, P-A-R, uh, or inside the quotation marks, P-A-R. Then I've got uh, comma and then rotation too, and that's just to help orient the, or rotate the, um, the figure uh, so that it, it looks a little nicer, at least in my humble opinion. So actually what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy, and I'm just gonna re rerun everything. And so again, there's our standard, our, S, our, S, our, S, our standard RS coefficients right here. Um, from the STDO, and that's you know, everything that we had just done. Uh, we, we just basically rewritten as a batch file, and so this is the last line right here, SE and pass. Hit enter, and so now you can see the path diagram. So you can see we have our, our um, you know, our factors, prejudice, intergroup anxiety with their respective indicator variables uh, right here. We've got um, essentially the contact variable with its respective indicator variables right here. And um, you know, that's in a nutshell. You can see the reference um, uh, variables that have been uh, given. So you can see right there, well, actually, actually maybe just a one. So let me get rid of that. And you can see right here, there's our reference variables are the dotted lines right here. And um, so, you know, basically this is just a multiple regression uh, involving uh, two exogenous latent variables as a predictor of a single uh, endogenous latent variable. So that is um, essentially it in a nutshell. I will say that if you wanted standardized estimates um, to appear within the, uh, the model, uh, then instead of using PAR, we would use uh, STAND, so uh, this right here. So just to kind of show you what that would look like, um, we'll just uh, you know, put that in, in here. And so now uh, we have the estimates from the standardized solution. I do want to kind of mention, I, I never refer to these as standardized estimates. It's not really the estimates that are standardized, but the variables that have been standardized. But um, so, you know, probably just using that as a shorthand is not the best thing. But um, at any rate, uh, there they are. And um, that concludes this video demonstration.